In this video, my goal is to show you how to make a sourdough starter step by step. And I also want to bring some clarity to the confusion and misconception out there about how to make and use a sourdough starter. If you're new to the channel, my name is Brian. I used to be a bread baker by day, now I'm a chef, and that's just a little bit of context about why I might be qualified to talk about this topic. But that being said, I'm definitely not a food scientist and I don't claim to be the absolute authority on sourdough or anything at all for that matter. So the core concept of making a sourdough starter is super simple and to better understand it, I've broken it down into three simple stages to work through. Stage one is where we create a medium for wild yeast and bacteria to thrive. I call this the capture stage and it usually lasts two to three days. Stage two is where we methodically build up that population of wild yeast and bacteria and I call that the cultivate stage and that usually takes an additional three to four days. And finally, stage three, where we maintain that population of yeast and bacteria with consistent daily feedings of fresh, starchy carbohydrates in the form of flour. I call this the maintenance stage, and it lasts pretty much from the end of the cultivate stage until the end of your life, if you want to. You feed the starter every day from that point on. When all this is done properly, after about a week, all that yeast and bacteria that we captured can now reliably eat flour and poop out CO2 that we can then use to leaven our sourdough bread. But you guys get it. Let's get right to the process. So to make a brand new sourdough starter, we're gonna need a few things at the ready. The first of which is is whole grain rye flour. We use whole grain instead of sifted for a few reasons, but the main one is that the germ in the bran on the outside of this kernel have not been stripped and sifted away like it would be in an all-purpose refined flour. And that basically means more fermentable nutrients, sugars, and food for all that lactic acid bacteria and wild yeast in the starter to eat, and more party time, basically. Next is all-purpose flour. I recommend using standard issue King Arthur flour brand if you can get it, and avoid bleached flour. That's definitely not gonna work. Up next is a quart of water and I prefer filtered water if I can get it. I pulled this right out of the door of my refrigerator and I'm setting this aside as a whole quart on day one of this process for two reasons. The first is that as this water sits, it's gonna dechlorinate, which is a good thing for our tender young yeast and bacteria buddies. The second is that as the water sits, it's gonna come up to room temperature and give us a reliable control temperature for this process, which is very important. Set that aside and finally, I'm gonna grab my gram scale. Of course, you can make a sourdough starter without a gram scale, but you know me, I'm a modern fancy 333, I'm 33 year old man, and uh, you know, I scale it all, baby. <laughs> Set that aside, and finally, you're gonna need a vessel. Pretty much anything that's about 12 to 16 ounces is gonna work just fine. Mason jars, deli containers, whatever you got. I bought this jar that conveniently came with some tasty peppers in it. I liked the way it looked, it was a good size and shape, and I think it's gonna look good on camera. I'm gonna dump these peppers out, give it a very thorough wash, and there we go. We've got what we need, let's make this starter. Day one feeding. We're in the capture stage now up front, so let's do just that. Into this jar, I'm gonna measure 150 grams of room temperature water and 100 grams of whole grain rye flour. We're gonna grab a nice long spoon just like this one and now I'm gonna give all that a classic stir up to combine and you'll notice this stuff is pretty wet looking. It's like 150% hydration meaning more water than flour and that's deliberate. In addition to that rye flour having tons of energy to give to this first day of fermentation, having more water in there is gonna mean more vigorous fermentation. Yeast and bacteria thrive in tepid wet conditions. Once that's all stirred up I'm gonna pop a lid on this. Once that's on there we're gonna let this thing sit and do its thing for 20 24 hours at room temperature. Okay, now it's day two or 24 hours into this process. And as you can see, no action. That's okay. We're basically building up a foundation of microbes and to do that, it's gonna take some time. What all those yeasts and bacteria in there really want right now is more food and fresh water, so that's what they're gonna get. To do that, I'm gonna throw half of what's in the jar away. After half of this is discarded, now I'm gonna clean up my jar so that you guys can see the progress a little better on camera. This is not a necessary step for you. And then I'm gonna measure in 150 grams of the water that we reserved yesterday and 100 grams of whole grain rye flour. Give it a stir, pop a lid on it loosely, and then we're gonna come back in 20 24 hours. Okay, day three or 48 hours into this process. Now we can really see some action. There's a lot of bubbles in that jar and it just reminds me of how active rye flour really is. Now, stage one is complete. We clearly have some yeast and bacteria trapped in our slurry. Now we're gonna switch to stage two or what I would call the cultivation stage. From here on out, it's a process of natural selection for the yeast and bacteria that will thrive on our 24 hour schedule. The molds and nasty bacteria that we don't want in here have a longer life cycle and those are gonna be out competed for food. Okay, 
Okay, now I've got my digital scale here and I'm gonna measure 75 grams of this rye starter from yesterday. Then I'm gonna pitch everything else in this jar into the trash and then I'm gonna scoop that 75 grams back into the jar. On top of that goes 75 grams of a reserved now dechlorinated water, 35 grams of all purpose flour and 35 grams of rye flour. I'm gonna clean it up for the camera, make sure that you guys can see what's going on in there. And there we go, the lid goes on loosely and I'm gonna check back in 24 hours. Okay, day four or technically 72 hours into this process and there's a lot of life going on here. Not a ton, but there's definitely some bubbles and that's a good sign. Now, we're gonna do a full repeat of what we did yesterday. That's 75 grams of starter. I'm gonna throw everything else out, then I'm gonna scoop all that starter back into the jar. And on top of that, I'm gonna measure 75 grams of water, 35 grams of all-purpose flour, and 35 grams of whole rye flour. Stir it up, loose lid, and we're gonna let it stand for 24 hours. After 24 hours, we're talking about day five now, and things are really starting to happen, you guys. This is almost a full doubling of size over that 24 hour period. And after two full days in this cultivate stage, we're looking really good. I'm gonna do one more feeding to seal the deal here, and that's gonna be the same as before. 75 grams of cultured starter, 75 grams of that reserved water, 35 grams each of all purpose flour, and whole grain rye flour. I'm gonna stir it up, pop a lid on it, and guess what? Let it sit for 24 hours. Here we go, day six, we made it. Now, take a look. This starter rose all the way to the lid and actually started to collapse. This is a 24 hour rise and fall. It's exactly the final sign that we need to know that we've captured and cultivated a sourdough starter. If you take a closer look at the time lapse here, you can really see what happens over that 24 hour period. After about six hours since we fed it, the starter reaches its peak. And that's what I would call a young leaven. That's the stuff that I really wanna bake with. From there, it kind of keeps on bubbling for like six to eight more hours. You can see that go through morning the next day. And at the 12 hour mark, it finally starts to recede a little bit and eventually it's gonna start to turn really sour. I went in there at the 16 hour mark just to double check and yep, super sour, but it smells really good. I even put the starter into some water to see if it passed the float test. And as you can see, it's sitting right on top of that water. And this is a really good indicator that your starter is healthy enough to start making you bread. And it only took six days to get to this point. So pretty cool. Now we're going to move into the last stage or what I would call the maintenance stage. To do this, I'm going to take 25 grams of the starter we fed yesterday. On top of that goes 50 grams of room temperature water. And at this point, tap water is totally fine. Then 50 grams of all purpose flour. This is now what I would consider a daily sourdough maintenance feeding. It's going to be this way from here on into perpetuity. We're going to be doing this feeding to maintain the starter that we captured and cultivated over the last few days. This is how you feed the starter for the rest of your life. If you're a casual baker, I'd say one maintenance feeding every 24 hours is more than enough to keep your starter alive and healthy. If you bake a lot, or if you're bringing your starter out of the fridge to get it into active duty again, I'd say twice a day, 12 hours apart is probably your best bet. And look, there's tons of ways to manage sourdough starters out there. This is just how I've done it over the years, and it's been a very reliable method. If you guys are just itching to get your new sourdough starter in action, I'll throw all of my sourdough starter videos down in the description. And hey, if you like this video, please, Give it a like, and if you have any questions that I didn't cover here, throw them down in the description. I try and get back to everybody because I really like talking about bread. As always, guys, thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you for sticking around to the end, and we'll see you next time. That was almost it. You had a little spit bubble on your lip. I had a spit bubble? Uh-huh.